what that decision was about last week. And is this really over? As Hey, guys, what's happening? What a busy, busy morning. Wow. Welcome, everybody. Thanks, thanks for tuning into my show. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. You guys are my best supporters out there, and you guys are incredible. So thanks for tuning in. Um, we've got a lot to talk about today. That's why I just had to suddenly pop on and, you know, go live because first of all, right there and right there, Dan Wooten is the man. Yes, sir. Dan Wooten kicks ass right out of the gate. You know, it's just, you, you mess with the bull, you get the horns. And I'm so happy for Dan, his new show. He prevailed. Uh, he rose above everything. So today he um, he had um, Peter Peter Tickton and Samantha on his on a show, and straight out of Compton, <laughs> straight out of Montecito, the Queen said that she would know evil when she met it and looked it in the eye, and that's Meghan Markle. Wow. I've even had people tell me that, you know, I've, I've, I've had people send me little comments here and there about even when Megan left the palace, she, she told the queen to, uh, it's a horrible to say that to anybody, but this is what I heard. Allegedly, she told the queen to drop dead. So yes, the queen said, the late, great, amazing Queen Elizabeth said, Megan Markle is evil. How does everybody feel about that? I mean, does that just does that just not put the icing on the cake about everybody knows who Meghan Markle is now? I'm just curious. You know, allegedly, in my opinion, that's you couldn't say it any better than that. It's 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 crazy, um, but it's awful. So there's 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 a lot out there that is still going to come to the surface about this. Oh, let's see. Hello, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody's somebody's messing around on my computer. I've got some little glitches here and there. And gosh. And the other thing, too. Bam. I mean, I'm so happy. Okay, I'm going to post the whole interview right after this show. But I have the whole Dan Wooten interview with Peter Tickton and Samantha Markle. Good news, everybody. Samantha rages on. Yes, she does, because her court case got booted up to a higher court. Yes, it did. So it goes on. And Peter Tickton, he is on it. This is just no way in hell over. This is just beginning. So Meghan Markle, get ready. <laughs> because it ain't over till the bag lady sea donkey sings. And she's going to be singing when she's... uh in court with my sister. Yes. <laughs> Allegedly, in my opinion, of course, the, 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 yeah, no, I, no, Megan will be in court with my sister, not a sea donkey or a, or a bag lady. No, Megan will be in court. Yeah. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Yippee. Yay. It's a good day for celebration today, but that's why I just wanted to jump in. Okay, we got 330 people watching. Much more to go. Let me catch up to some of these comments here. Way back up to the top. All right. So the other thing, when I post this, I'm going to post the entire interview right after the show. Um, but the other thing about this, which is amazing, Peter Tickton himself. Dead to right, straight out death threats from the Sussex squad. And Megan's behind it. I mean, she's the one who supports these people allegedly. She allegedly gives them quarterly bonuses in their bank accounts allegedly. And for her to get on and start bitching and moaning about online bullying and trolls and, and well, come on, you know? What's with the Sussex squad? I mean, is Meghan Markle really behind? Is she really behind the Sussex squad and allowing 
the bullying, the threatening, the stalking, especially of a disabled woman in a wheelchair, my sister, Samantha. Wow. You guys are just, you guys are going to just be blown away at this, at this thing. I'm going to, I'm trying to post it right now, by the way. So mm. it just really, really just makes me sick to my stomach that, and it's embarrassing that I even have a, a family member like that. Nobody in my entire family has a mean bone in their body unless they have it coming, then you're going to get the shit. So, but wow. Unbelievable. All right. Let's get some of these comments here. I want to keep you guys uh, on my show and interested. Yes. Yeah, so I like to say hi to everybody. Hello, everybody. Bless you too. Bless you. Who is that? Who is that? Christine Wyatt. Hello, Thomas and family here from York, Yorkshire Dales, UK. God bless you. Love. Greetings to your dad. Thank you so much. However, Megan tries to reinvent herself. It's not working. People just don't like her, especially the symbolic way she has treated her family. Most of all, your dad. Absolutely. And these things about the queen, uh, Peter, Peter, uh, Samantha's lawyer, Peter said it. I mean, wow. He said it. <laughs> it. I mean, you have to be evil. You have to be evil if that were to ever come out of the late, great Queen Elizabeth's mouth. You have to be truly, truly evil for her to say that. Wow. Unbelievable. And allegedly, I heard somebody sent me a bunch of messages that they heard um, somebody in the palace or something leaked something about when Meghan left, told her to F off. Allegedly. Wow. Lisa Wentworth. Hello again from South Yorkshire. JD, Hank and Shank removed from the Royal website. They need to be removed, period. And I mean, Megan's still gallivanting around like she's allowed to use Royal titles for a financial gain because apparently uh, she looked it up. Um, and where was it? Uh, all the royals have been doing it for, but you know what? They're royals and they can do what they want. Megan and Harry, Harry, you're still a royal. Sort of, kind of, you know, <laughs> you know, sort of, kind of, but you guys left the royal family, called them racists, tried to do things your own way, bitched and moaned, bullied staff. All allegedly, in my opinion, that I've heard all over the internet, anybody can look it up. And then you leave. You're not part of the royal family anymore. So don't act like it. Stop using your royal titles in the United States. They don't have that here in the United States. So really embarrassing. Really embarrassing. Oh, wait. Princess Carlisle, have I heard the brilliant news that Hank and Shank have been taken off the website? It is a good, it's, the news just keeps getting better. <laughs> yes, 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 this is brilliant news, isn't it? Yes, it is. Claudia, hello. Maureen Ingelson, hello again. Princess Carlisle, okay, you guys are talking to each other. Whoop, 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 doo, doo. Heard on Paula M. Channel the moment ago, whoopee, the party. Is that mine, folks? All right. The party is at Maureen's house. All right. Joe Jones. They were not part of the... Yeah, they haven't been part of the working worlds for a long time. Uh, but they are still in line of succession. Well, yeah. Um, the day... You guys even get considered to be back in the royal family or part of the royal family in succession is the day, first of all, hell freezes over. Um, oh, no, but that's like when, well, yeah, well, when Megan gets there, it's going to freeze over, allegedly, in my opinion. But, but no, it's not going to happen. 
you'll be old, dry, and crispy, and buried on some deserted island underneath Antarctica by the time you get into the royal family. <laughs> Allegedly, in my opinion. So, all right. Who do we got here? Okay, hopefully we can choose. All right. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for, for tuning in. Like I said, please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Uh, my numbers are, are uh, climbing slowly, so I'm very happy about that. Okay. We'll do those two are back in the Royal website. Again, what? Are they off or are they on? Can somebody look this up? right now and find out if they're on the Royal website or they're off. Okay, they're on, they're off, they're on, they're off, they're on, they're off. So they're back on, no, they're back off. Back on, back off. Oh, wax on, wax off. <laughs> Amanda Richards. Hey, handsome, how you doing? Let me have more laughs. That's why I like your channel. You make a lot of people happy. So keep it up. Keep up the good work, hon. Yes, I will. That is my job. Now I have a job. And it's been a it's a great job. And I'm liking it more every day. Um, like I said, I had a I had a major life change uh two years ago when dad had a stroke and I came here and I've been here for him every day since. Um so yeah, this gives me something to do. This puts a smile on dad's face, and I don't make hardly any money at it, but I like doing it, you know, because I don't need that much money. I'm just, you know, I'm very simple, you know, and I especially don't need hundreds and millions of dollars of other people's money falling out of my ass that I spend like it's my own either. <laughs> Not... mm. Hold on one second, guys. Hello? Hello? Whatever. Um, so anyway, yeah. All right, let's see. Check for yourself. Check for yourself. Well, I can't because I'm busy right now. I'm sorry, jo Joanne Shepard. Check for yourself. Wow, okay. I will when I'm done with this broadcast. Okay, Marion Campbell, the duck ass of marmalade, queen of QVC, yeah. It's so weird. So she posted, she posted on her um, Sussex Rain website or whatever, and she was boasting. Talk about word salad. Go on Instagram and look at this Sussex Rain or whatever Sussex Meghan Markle that has to do with, um, you know, her whatever her what is American Riverboat whatever it is something. Um, but you talk about now. I know for a fact, just by reading this, it's Megan. I mean, word salad galore <laughs> that goes on and on and on, basically says the same thing four times over in this long of a paragraph on Instagram and boasting about how proud and how amazing, wow, I must be popular. God, what is wrong with you? Hello? Good morning, how are you? Yep. Yep, yep. Oh, you know what, 50 years old, that's a huge birthday party. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we could we could definitely plan on that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's done in a Port of Nuevo, I believe. Yeah. Oh no, um, oh my god, it's it's called um what is it called? It's called Happy Hour. There's a little dive bar down there. But they're famous because the guy who cooks for that little dive bar, he's a five-star chef at one of the restaurants there and owns a restaurant. 
and my God, I am not kidding, on Thursdays, they have the most, I swear, by my life, the best fried chicken I have ever had in my life. And, oh yeah, he's, he, he wants to go there, but we gotta go kind of early because it gets crowded. So we have to go like by three o'clock. Okay, thank you so much, bye. That was the landlord. <laughs> uh, no, they're having a huge, uh, that was the gal who owns the house here and her family's coming down. Sorry for the uh, rude phone call like that. It wasn't rude, but you know, I got to talk to her. Um, she's coming down, they're having a huge 50th birthday party. And that means I got another place to go to. So uh, anyway, where was I now? Um, I was trying to do this also. Um, anyway, let's get back here to some of these comments here. I'm just all over the place today. There's just so much. Oh, I was talking about the website, her website. And so it's gloating, 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 using the royal titles. And then on eBay, selling her used clothes. Oh my God. And that's no joke. That is no joke. I was just like, you have got to be kidding me. Look at that. Are you serious? Okay, so going from being a member of the royal family to selling pots and pans, dishes, candles, making pudding on a cooking show, and selling your used clothes on eBay. I mean, some of, it says it right there. Um, used or uh, pre-owned. <laughs> it just, it, it's just, it, I woke up today and I started seeing these things and I, I, I can't help but say that I smiled and my whole day brightened up. <laughs> but that's when you know you big time. You go from living in the palace, living in the palace, on the balcony, to making puddings, jellies, and jams, and Tupperware on Instagram. Big round of applause. Big, big round of applause. Yes, good job. Daddy is so proud. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Oh, Princess uh, Carl. Carol, they're back on? How, how, how does that keep happening? They're off, they're on. They're off, they're on. I mean, do, does she have a hacker working for her? I would say yes. In my personal alleged opinion, I would bet that Meghan Markle allegedly has a hacker who hacks into my shit all the time and probably hacks into the royal website. Back on, back off, back on, back off. <laughs> yes. All right. Who do we got here? Okie dokie. Jenny, hello from Wisconsin. Hello, 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 hello. You know what? Just look at the Royal website. They are on it there. You know, it's weird. I mean, there must be a hacker. I mean, how do you go off and keep going back on? Off and on. Hmm. Becca McFarlane, are you happy they booted your sister and brother-in-law off the royal website? I would be. They need their title stripped. What the track record behind these two? I mean, it's coming out. It's definitely coming out. Oh, boy, is it coming out. It's every single day. Now the whole world knows what the late great Queen Elizabeth thought of Megan when she said, I will know true evil when I look it in the eye. And Megan Markle is evil. Wow. Now, I don't know about you, but there is not a good enough PR company in the world to recover from that. <laughs> so you keep uh, shelling that, uh, that little shell corporation money out there. Keep paying for that PR. Yep but save some 
for Samantha's court court case because you're going to need it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Woohoo. It's a good day. It's a good day. It's a good day. It's a good day. All right. Uh, Angela, because I had Paula, is on cloud 10. Yes. Paula's always on cloud 9 or 10. Okay. <laughs> Barbara, hi everybody. Tudor Rosie, hello, hello. Joe Jones, hello. Sandy Lowe, hey. Thomas from Canada, hello, Sandra. Anna Perkins, hello there. Hello, Thomas, and all in the chat. Hope it's a great day for all you. It is a great day. It's absolutely a splendid day. Even though I have to move in two days, but that's okay. I have three places to choose from. I'm not even sweating it. And the best part about I already have all my stuff in storage. So all I got to do is just pretty much just grab my personal belongings and the other crap that I got laying around here that I haven't even used or touched since I've been here. So my next place is furnished. So all I got to do is just bring, bring myself. So yeah. Yippee. Mary Clemmer, kick ass, Tom. Yep. Can we just take a minute? No, 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 not, not, not to ask Megan how she, how she is because now we know everybody know how Megan's how she's doing today. I guarantee you, every single dish, pot, pan, glass, silverware, Tupperware, just hit the wall. All the stuff that she probably bought for her new original idea cooking show, <laughs> yeah, all got broken this morning, guaranteed. <laughs> All right, Teresa McNamara, McNamara, McNamara. Yes. Hi, Tom. Good morning from Australia. Curious, when Megan was born, did your did your dad see any birthmarks that looked like calligraphy digits with swirls? Maybe three sixes. Um. I don't know, but that's a damn good question. You know. Wait a second. Hold on. Hold on a second. Rachel Megan Markle. Six, six, six. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Um, no, but in allegedly, in my opinion, you know, had we all know what we know now, God, it would have been so much better if Dory would have just swallowed that night. <laughs> allegedly, in my opinion. Man. <laughs> oh, God. Barbara Brown, she does watch Dan Wooten, but I hate that he's always bringing the left. Yeah, you know, you got to leave kind of politics out of it, but actually it has something to do in this case. So we got to let that one slide. When you watch the interview, I'm going to post it. I'm really just trying to post it right now, but, you know, it's so dang busy. Um, how, what should we do with the title? You guys want to help me with the title for the Dan Wooten interview? Because I kind of put a good one up there already. Um, Let's see. Um, let's put evil. <laughs> there we go. That's good enough for me. The main thing is just to get it up there and get going, right? So, yeah. So. There we go. Um, give me just one minute, guys. I, I've been working on this all morning, and I and I will post it. So it posts by the time we're done with this broadcast. That's right. Okay. Do do do. I'm just doing a couple of hashtags. Give me a minute here. Oh yeah, gotta love those guys, the Sussex Squad. They just been called out, raked, 
over the coals, back and forth by Dan Wooten and Peter Tickton. Wham. Bam. <laughs> Good night. The shit's going to hit the fan. So, um, one more here, guys. And viral, viral video, viral short. Okay. Oh, don't forget hashtag evil. <laughs> <laughs> yes there you go we want that one bam there we go it's uploading the video now all right, guys, I'm sorry. I know that's really super boring, but I was really working on that all morning, and I just had to get it out there because I was on the phone with Samantha earlier. Should we call Samantha? Anybody? Any takers on that? Would you guys like if I called Samantha right now and said hello to my lovely sister, the nice sister? Yes. The one that's in the wheelchair with MS that, you know, Megan is such an advocate on disabled people. Wow. Just gets better and better. Better and better and better and better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, I've got all kinds of little ticks, bugs, all kinds of shit now on the computer. But security is on the way. So all you little Sussex squad people sitting in your mom's basement, throwing food at her and yelling at her, tell, telling, telling your mom to get you a new sandwich when she pays your bills and, you know, pays your utilities and does your laundry for you. Cause all you can do is just sit there and stuff your face and hack on the computer and harass people and bully people. Yeah. Yeah. Let's We'll just wait for that to process there for a minute. All right, let's get back to some of these comments. But before I was talking about uh, that phone call that I got was, it's just how she, she goes, oh, that's what it was. She goes, for somebody that's so irrelevant, I have 512,000, 512,000 followers overnight. What's that little kid? What's that little kid video? And he's sitting in the car seat in the back seat of the car, and he's like, "Uh, bullshit, uh, bullshit." Yeah, the one on social media, the little kid. It's, he's hilarious. Well, you know, I I kind of looked it up, and that's kind of impossible to have five hundred and fifteen thousand followers like in one day, unless you pay for them. So. Because how could you get that kind of ex exposure? You don't have that many followers on social media. You know? Now, you did before. You had 3 million before, when, when you, before you were the Duchess of Dipshits, allegedly, in my opinion. But um, no. Yeah. And I, I, just don't, I just don't get it. I really just don't get it. The word salad that you put together for American Riverboat, whatever it is, the word salad, we know it's you. Anybody, I guarantee you people right now are looking up on Instagram on Sussex Rain or whatever where you advertise American River River Boat Madness or whatever the hell it is. Word salad, it's like you're up on stage with a microphone talking to a bunch of people who get bored and start closing their eyes because you just keep blah, 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 blah. Word salad, you... You think of the biggest words that, you know, if you think big words are going to make you look smart, uh, you should probably think again because, I don't know, you're pretty much a shining example of what not to do. <laughs> Me and dad trip out on that all the time. Who 
fumbles the ball in the in the end zone in the in the Super Bowl and loses the championship. Who does that? Who gets to the highest plateau one could ever want to achieve in their life? What is going on? I mean, how who does that? How do you mess that up when all you had to do was just respect the queen? Learn how to curtsy. Don't laugh at her. Don't give her a hard time. You know, don't snarl at her. And respect. You'd have been set for life. For life. It's just amazing. I just don't get it. But I guess uh, I guess you have to live with yourself now when you look at look at yourself in one of those 18 mirrors in each room that you have. 18 mirrors in each room, probably. So you move a quarter inch to the right, you can see yourself again. Ew. <laughs> Nicole Wade. Harry should take the kids and run. He should have done that a long time ago. But I don't know. And, you know, 2024, the karma year, the truth. What, 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 was that, what was that show? The X-Files. The truth is out there. <laughs> it's going to, this will be like an episode of the X-Files for sure. Teresa, hello from Texas. Violet, that's sad that Megan put the queen through hell. Yes, it's horrible. Laura, yeah. Hi, Purple. Um, Kaz at home. Good morning. Angel Sugars will be on the warpath. Woo, yeah. <clears throat> Lisa Perch. It's hard to say in here the truth about your sister, but it's the truth. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. It's just amazing that uh, how much more is going to come out. I mean, um, I'm just so glad that Samantha got her court case put to a higher court district uh, with three judges, uh, you know. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be good. Let me just unlock this because it keeps on switching all over by itself. I wonder why. I don't know. But it does. I do know what it is. <laughs> One more here. Okay, dokie. There we go. Publish. There it is. Bam. All right, but so you guys, I just posted. Uh, I just posted the entire Dan Wooten uh, interview with Peter Tickton and Samantha Markle. There you go. So when we're done here, jump over and you can watch the entire entire uh, interview. It's really good. Very, very good. Very informative. And uh, like I said, save your money there, uh, Miss Baggy Wrinkly Pants, because you're going to need it. <laughs> yes. All right, here we go. Kathy S. Has Matt and me again are off the working royal website. No more be a, no more bullshit, bullshit in the working worlds. I don't know. They're off it. They're on it. I don't know. Lee Do, what does Meg have? What does Meg know and have on the royal family? It must be pretty huge. You know, at this point, you guys. Seriously, is anybody going to believe her? I mean, everything that she gets busted in every, but everything she says gets debunked and busted. It's done. It's bullshit. So what is Meghan Markle going to say now? Huh, Meg? What are you going to say? Who's going to believe you? The whole world knows who you are and the type of person you are. Just alone by what you've done to Samantha and dad. And the royal family. So,
Yep. I'm getting messages all day long. So it's just, yeah. I mean, who knows what she has? And it's probably, you know, I don't, I seriously wouldn't believe. I can't. Who could believe a liar? When you get caught in a lie, your credibility is shot forever. It's done. It's over with. You're done. You know? Nobody's going to believe you, especially, you know, I think somebody published three whole pieces of paper with about 30, 40 lies that all got debunked that are just straight out lies. I mean, come on. So, you know, you can sit there and, and spend those people's hard earned money that you think is yours and spend it on your PR and go ahead. But nobody's going to believe it because there's three, there's three companies out there that probably print 60, 70% through. The other ones that you pay for, bullshit. You pick up the phone, your PR picks up the phone, and they tell the paper what you want to say, and you pay for it. Allegedly, in my opinion, of course. Yeah. Okay. Rent a Royal. Derek, rent a Royal. <laughs> Scampy, Scampy K9, Scampy K9, don't forget to pack up the chicken on the broomstick. When, oh, I know. I, I took it down yesterday because I, I don't know. I wanted to try something di different so everybody knows that I posted the Tyson Fury fight, right? I just threw it out there because it's good to mix things up. It's good to have a little variety, and I know probably... The majority of my audience is not really interested in boxing, but I just put it out there just to see what would happen. And it's, you know, it didn't do very well. <laughs> but, but, you know, there are so much more entertaining and exciting things to talk about besides Meghan Markle and what she wore and how many wrinkles she has on her clothes or whatever pudding she's going to cook up and stir with her good finger on the show. You know what <laughs> I mean? So yeah, we're, there's. I'm just. I'm just uh, trying a few different things here, guys. Uh, tacky. Tick. What is that? T X K. I T K A T. Tick. 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 Tack. Tick. Tack. Cat. <laughs> Samantha is very courageous with a lawyer that won't relent. You know, you got to hand it to this guy too. Peter Tickton, good job. I mean, way to kick some ass. Way to get in there, down and dirty. You're not going down. It's going to be a fight. Corruption was done. Somebody got to that judge, allegedly, in my opinion. So hopefully, you know, just down the road, you know, something will come out of that too. But Peter, you're, you're an awesome guy, you, you know, and thank you for sticking by Samantha. And by the way, in the interview that I posted uh, on my channel, Dan Wooten and Peter Chicken have nothing but amazing, nice things to say about Samantha. And she doesn't deserve at all to be treated like that and to be defamed. Winnie Gutherson, Samantha is a trooper. Yes, she is. The sugars are fun to argue with. Yes, they are, Montana. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's like... You know, if I had somebody, you know, mooching off me living in my basement on their computer 24 hours a day and they told me to do their laundry, look, I'd screw the door shut. <laughs> yep. I would screw the door shut and that'd be about it. Bye. <laughs> Open it once a day and throw some Twinkies down there for them. Royal 55, I have three kids. I couldn't turn a corner daily without one hanging on. You never see the two you, you never see the two with the kids. And they post these stupid little things about, oh, we're in a ball day, Texas for the, you know, uh, visiting a family just to reopen a can of wounds. 
you know, like, what are you doing there? And then, and then they post, oh, now we have to rush back to Los Angeles to the children, you know? But the problem with that is you're rushing off everywhere every day, seven days a week and coming back for 10 minutes, fueling up the private jet to go to Starbucks. Uh, Harry, bring the jet back. I, I let's, let's drive the jet through the car wash. Um, hurry. Cause we have to, uh, let's, let's fuel up the jet. Cause we have to fly to San Jose. It's only a three hour drive, but we can fly. You know, it's like you, you go everywhere without the children. And even if you look up on Instagram on uh, Archie and Lily, Arch, Archie and Lilibet, right? They've got what? I don't know, a couple hundred pictures of the kids on there. The problem with that is 80% of them, the kids are looking one direction away from the camera. And the other problem is there's only like four pictures, but they're, they're all used over and over and over again. It's really bizarre. You guys should check it out. Yeah. Oh, we want privacy. We want privacy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, be sure to go on eBay and buy some of Megan's pre-worn clothes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Damn. Please wash the shit before you sell it. Ew. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> Mary Taylor. The kids are trained to hit subscribe. They get a food pellet. <laughs> Ding, ding. Ding, ding. <laughs> that's classic. That's, that's, that's really good, Mary. That's, that's a good one. That's funny. All right. Bee's knees, forgive me. They ran out of my new favorite cake, and I took it out on chat. No one is, I mean, here, but someone does reek of fermented fish funk. Fermented fish funk. Well, bees knees, I'm going to have to steal that from him because that's nasty, but I get it. Fermented fish funk. Now, one could associate that with a fishing vessel, like a fishing boat. Let's just say fishing yacht. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. Oh, yes, please call the beautiful Samantha. Okay, we have a ticker. Let's call Samantha. Let's call Samantha. Let's get Samantha's firsthand input on what we're talking about. Because let's see now. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Hi, you're live on the air with Tom Markle Jr. Who do we have here? <laughs> oh, I'm not. Don't pull my chain again. Uh, yes, yes, yes. That's right. You're the lucky winner today. Um, I am. I am. I got your back, girl. I. I am just kicking ass. I got your back. I just. Uh, I. I downloaded your whole entire interview with Dan Wooten and Peter Tickton and you, of course, and I posted it already. And now I'm, oh my God. You're the bomb. and now I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing a live and we're, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. And I asked, should I call Samantha? And we've got a unanimous decision on the screen here. So that's why I called you. You're the lucky winner. God, that's my lucky day. That's so cool of you and everybody else too. Thank you. Yeah. So I just, you know, I am so happy. Like I woke up and that's the first news I saw was the little clip from Dan Wooten. I didn't see your interview yet, but I, <laughs> I saw the little clip where he goes, he goes, the queen said, I'll know evil when I look it in the eye and I know evil it's, and Megan is evil. I mean, I just, I know, right? I did. It's not, it's not. Yeah. I didn't even I didn't even need to drink coffee this morning. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's, right. That's like the opening scene from the Omen Five or 
January 6th. Like, this could be a sequel. You know, I don't know. This this goes way back. This goes way back. It was a, a trilogy of terror. Now, anybody who's old enough will, would remember this is like a 70s movie. The tr <laughs> trilogy of terror, which scared the living shit out of me, by the way. Okay. Now, when if it, 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 you guys can Google this trilogy of terror, and when you see that little doll creature in there with the black hair, I want you to think of one person. And one person only. <laughs> and I think yeah, everybody sure. everybody gets the idea of who I'm talking about. <laughs> Aaron Black Trilogy. I swear to God, and I told Keith Chris on X. You know, I forget how old I was. I was a kid, right? But I remember strapping all of my dolls in for the night into their chairs because <laughs> I was afraid they'd come alive. I can't <laughs> so in case anybody doesn't know what Trilogy of Terror was, it was a movie with Karen Black. But it was about this little doll, this little voodoo doll that she bought in a gift shop or somebody bought it for. Her. And it has a little a little chain attached to it, like some sort of, of a medallion, right? And if the chain falls off, it comes to life. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I re let, me, let me fill you in on that. I remember it very well. I don't remember the script and the, and, and the dialogue, but I can tell you. The character's husband was, he, he was traveling on business. He was like an archaeologist or anthropologist. And he had brought back this doll and set it on the table for her. And you're right, it had it had a scroll on it that let you know the owner know that if this falls off, the spirit of the doll will come to life. Well, then all hell breaks loose. Oh, my God. And she sets it on the table after she hangs up the phone. Yeah. <laughs> If anybody has not seen the Trilogy of Terror, I urge you to watch it because you'll see a resemblance of that little doll and, and Meghan Markle, <laughs> allegedly in my opinion. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing. Okay, now, dad, wait, 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 wait. Our dad has such a sense of humor, right, that while me and Bonnie and me and Samantha were watching this, in the living room on Kimball Street, remember? Yeah, I don't remember where it was. Okay. <laughs> Dad, right, was tying fishing line to objects in our room. <laughs> My. Was a trip. Yeah. So anyway, what happens? The little chain falls off the doll and it comes to life and it goes into the kitchen and gets a butcher knife about 12 inches long and starts chasing Karen Black all over the house with it. And I'll never forget that she was locked in the bathroom. She locked herself in the bathroom and the little doll was on the other side going, yeah, yeah, with the knife under the door. That scared the shit out of me and I didn't sleep for a week. Yeah, people can Google it. it, it yeah. It's a scary movie yeah. for a kid. Now we look at it as ridiculous, but you know, kids are uh, impressed by films. That, well, they don't look, they can't separate fact from fiction. I, yeah, I know. See, Films were films and special effects were done so much differently back in those days that I mean you got to love them for what they are they're classics because you so just you got that doll, so you got that doll for her and Chucky for Harry. <laughs> oh, guess what? There's some more good news. Are you ready? Like, look at this. DB says lemonade may end contract. <laughs> She didn't even start yet. They probably got wind of uh, calling the queen evil, and they said, no, nope, later. <laughs> wow. Okay. TC, we've got an, a $5 tip in the tip jar. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Anyway, how's your day going, Samantha? Not bad. I was just catching up on a lot of the news and rumors that, I mean, that seemed to be quelled that their names had been reportedly removed from the royal website. Someone corrected that to say they've just been subordinated under Andrew. So, you know, it is what it is. We'll see what happens. Yeah, it's just, uh, I, I, you know, I just can't say that how excited and how happy I am after I watched Dan Wooten today and your interview. I think it, it could not have been done better. And you got to hand it to to your attorney. What what a great guy for just like, you know, sticking to his guns, not going down and just he's ready for a fight and and it's awesome. I think it's just amazing and wonderful. Well, he is. He's really uh savvy and very experienced. I mean, you know, let's face facts when 
uh, too many things seem like coincidences. They're not coincidences, you know? And um, so that being said, without getting into detail, he was spot on. Um, and, and I think it's really important. It's important in, in the big picture in our world today when we look at stuff like this, how it does, like people say, well, you know, I'm not going to get bent out of shape unless it comes to my front door. Well, there's an old saying, first they come for them, then they come for you. So it can yeah. come to your front door, and that's what's really um, scary about that. Yeah, well, but, you know, I'm, I'm very happy that he bought it to light and specifically said Sussex Squad death threats that are viable and, and real and harassment and stalking. I mean, right. it makes you live in fear, and especially – being disabled, I mean, that's like times 10. That's like for anybody else, times 10. You know what I mean? Well, you know, and, and was, with respect to you and everybody else out there, I was talking to someone about this the other day. I, mean, I think it's important to differentiate between um, someone who, who, I mean, between being labeled as disabled and using person-centered language. Like, I don't consider myself disabled because I am not disabled. I'm a person who lives with disabilities, and when you adapt and you overcome, you can be more able-bodied and have a relatively normal quality of life. So, um, you know, and, and, and I think similarly, like, people are quick to define to people by their conditions, you know? But it's like if someone has herpes, you don't call them a herpetic person. <laughs> it's a person who has a condition, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's all good. I mean, I know people mean that in a in a positive light and true. You know, you don't attack people who are already suffering with whatever they're suffering from. Yeah, no, and you don't add insult upon injury either. Exactly. Exactly. And you yeah. definitely you definitely don't go on 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 a world stage and bitch and moan about online bullying and when you're dishing it out and you're paying for it. In my opinion. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> What's the trip about this? You look at now, I mean, and then you've got plastic surgery, monstrosity, Kim Kardashian shining in and going after Princess Catherine. Well, let's face facts. One is a plastic surgery monstrosity who is jealous as hell because she seemingly hates herself going after Kath Princess Catherine, yeah. who is naturally gorgeous. Do that math. Yeah, it's just really, really disturbing. Um, just the, the hate campaign. Um, and it's just, it's just horrible. I mean, Catherine is untouchable. She is a flawless human being. And she's kind, caring, and genuine. And you can see it. I mean, she doesn't have stress eating her from the inside out like Megan does, you know? I mean, Megan looks like she's got flesh-eating bacteria eating away from the inside of her face, you know? There are some people who would call it mudslinging, but let's let's get this straight. I mean, even from the beginning, when we were all trying to set the record straight and fight fake, fight fake news PR and troll attacks, when from the beginning we were trying to lend support and just mm -hmm. be neutral, but the media turned it into a shit fest. And so what I'm going to say is there's a difference here in that you know, we were fighting against fake news and setting the record straight. And then you've got mudslinging, vicious, vile, disgusting trolls and um, KPR employees out there who are spinning and spreading things like wildfire. In other words, we can all, some people would say, well, why can't you all just get on the same page? Why can't you all just, you know, agree to disagree or engage in conflict resolution well that's really cool and really ideal what you're doing with rational people because that's how adults behave in the real world but when you've got people who are resistant to peaceful resolution and clearly resistant to therapy <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not going to happen you know that's like trying to make amends and trying to be mugs with um don wayne gave or charles manson <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe they should change the Montecito Rescue Chicken Mansion. Change it, change it to Spawn Ranch too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here lives, yeah, Meghan Markle Spawn Ranch. <laughs> yeah, Is, I, Isabella says, 
she isn't very bright, is she? She fails at everything, but temporarily in snarling men. It is astounding the queen called her evil, by the way, a woman so careful with her words. And that's very true. And that's exactly what Dan was saying. I mean, or, or um, uh, oh, the other guy on there. Um, it was amazing for the queen to use that language. She has to just really, really be sold on the fact from the pit of her stomach that she knows, you know, that she's evil. Well, you're talking about a queen who, you know, unbeknownst to a lot of people who, who think, oh, well, they can, you know, it's easy to say because they're wealthy. She lived a very hard life. She worked as a mechanic. She was always the first one to step up to, to the plate from what I've seen and want to do her own work. And she seemed to have a huge heart leading, what, 620 charities. So yeah. here's a, a good woman who has inspired nations. And in my opinion, as I posted this morning, was divine in her own right. That kind of woman does not call someone evil unless there is a very, very good reason. Yeah. Yep. The queen has you spoken. Know, I mean, let's face it. She, you know, she's human. At the end of the day, all families have their problems. But and if anyone understood unconditional love, but firm unconditional love with boundaries, it was the queen of England. But yep. I think she had to draw the line here with this one. Yep, that's right. I agree. Wolf Atkins, the only thing that brand of hers will ever go down as is the bland, beige, boring, and desperately dull D-lister forever. <laughs> that's a tongue twister, but we got it. Trying to ride Princess D's, Princess D's coattails, having already ridden her son in more ways than one. Ew. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. ew. I, just, I, just, I just lost a little bit of my mind. I just threw up in my mouth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lily Langtree, I'd rather watch paint dry than anything Rachel Ragland puts out. <laughs> You'd oh. rather watch it. You'd rather watch it dry than peel. Like the the paint inside of that church seemed like it was peeling in some spots on their wedding day. In my opinion. I know. I speaking of paint. I, I you know it just it might it's mind boggling. I I think like you know like the Earl Shy paint jobs like the drive through paint your car places. <laughs> I think Megan has probably this little like little box she sticks her head in in the morning and it sprays Bondo, lacquer, <laughs> primer. <laughs> Some makeup, whatever, whatever tint or tan color she presses on the box and so presses for the Kardashian could be buds. Yeah. Seems like the two peas in a pod. Fake, 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 fake. Man. Yeah, you, you know what would be really funny is if Megan gets the giant butt implants. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Megan. Spend the last of somebody else's money and get yourself a giant ass. <laughs> oh man, you guys, then you guys can go uh, hanging with the Kardashians again. Yes. Nobody knows where Archie Bucks and Lilla, Lilla Invisibet is. Nobody knows. Nobody knows, and I don't think anybody cares. Hey. I mean, that's another thing, you know, there are a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, I'm trying to play devil's advocate and looking both sides of the fence here. There are people who say, well, you know, they have to have a private life and they're not there for paparazzi. Maybe they just live a sheltered private life. Yeah. Well, I get that. There are celebrities who keep their kids sheltered, but within psychologically normal margins, for example, like some drones, some paparazzi would see them outside in the backyard swinging on swings. Yeah. You if know, they're, if they're never allowed, if they're never allowed to go outside, eh, what kind of life would that be? I mean, we don't know that, but it's, you know, let's just face facts. It's getting kind of twilight zone-ish. Yeah. It's, it's bizarre. You know, the, they have drones now that can, that can, that can be a mile away. When the, the optics on these things, of course, 
I mean, they wouldn't even know. The drone could be, the, the drone could be out over the ocean and still get a close up of anybody coming in and out of the house. I mean, I mean, I'm sure they got a million pictures of Doria trimming special kind of plants in the backyard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll just plant them with the tomatoes because they look the same. <laughs> That reminds me of someone was talking about some rose bushes around Montecito and some squatting in the bushes uh, stuff going on a long time ago. And all I could see was like a scene from Mommy Dearest where she was in the backyard packing away at the rose bushes, having a spaz in the middle of the night. Yeah. You know, with everything that's come out today, I was telling everybody earlier that I would bet my bottom dollar that all the dishes and all the plateware and the cookware and the pots and pans and the mason canning jars that she bought for her new show, they're all broken right now. <laughs> uh, here's, my, here's my suggestion for American Riviera Orchard. You know, it's cool, everybody loves dishes, we eat off of them, and you want to design something cool and seemingly try to copy, you know, Martha Stewart or William Sonoma. Well, go for it, but with your dishes, I would recommend bumper pads around all of them. Yeah. Yeah, because they're flying. Yeah. Well, you know, we were talking about the 99 cent store before also, you know, and that's where, that's where, I mean, I'm surprised, I'm surprised she doesn't buy everything from the 99 cent store and throw her own label on it, you know, and sell a plate for $89, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I mean, for, for cheaper companies, cool, but if you want to market yourself as an exclusive luxury brand, brand you, you better put high quality out. And I haven't seen that. I think a lot of people are questioning, well, wait, where's the merch? Yeah, where and where is the merchandise? Things. Where Where is it? Is there any of, is, is any of the merchandise out yet? On no, I, I haven't seen it. We saw, we saw a commercial and people were questioning what exactly except for that tote bag that looks like something out of the Whole Foods Produce Department <laughs> uh, with a little stamp on it of a crown, which then the crown is totally, you know, a slap in the face of the royals in my opinion. Yeah. Well, she, she, she published, uh, she wrote something, a really, really long, like, word salad on Sussex Rain, talking about American Riverboat, whatever it is, Riverboat Swamp or something. Um, Riviera Orchard. Oh, Riviera Orchard. Oh, orchard, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but you can tell it's her, right? She goes on explaining, you know, they've covered, oh, that's what I was going to say earlier. They've covered everything in their LLC thing and their trademark thing that allows them to sell everything that Walmart sells, pretty much. It's just like, I mean, all, all she's done is just set herself up when nobody buys that pile of shit thing, there's 50 other piles of shit to choose from. I mean, she's the, the, the door is wide open for every known piece of merchandise under any description. So, well, wait a minute, I'm, conf I'm confused. I mean, you know, maybe it's you know, fake news, maybe it's uh, screwed up PR, but you know, on and off, there have been reports of hooking up with you know, a target for a designer line. There have been um, reports of hooking up with QVC for some product, and it's like it never materialized. So, okay, and drum roll, and we wait. Yeah. MGF. Yeah. Oh, no, I've definitely heard of all the hooking up, but I didn't hear know about the merchandise with the other stores. I've heard a lot about the hooking yeah. up. Yeah, but we, <laughs> but we never saw any merchandise. In other words, I think sometimes their PR is just throwing things out to see if it sticks to generate the demand. You know what I mean? Tip Top says, who is this man? Is it Megan's half-brother? Wow, read bingo. <laughs> yes, it is. You know, uh, you know what? This is a good point because... <laughs> I have never in my life, like in all the people we have known, my friends, your friends, anybody out there, I've never heard anybody refer to siblings as half. 
Yeah. Like you are, you are. We have the same dad. She was mm-hmm. raised in our household and in our lives. It's not, you're not have anything any more than like the Kardashians. They're halves, Chris Jenner, different dads, you know, of, or Kardashian. So have you ever heard them call each other half sister? No. No. Exactly. But Ma- Megan, said, Megan wishes that she had siblings, remember on the Oprah in- interview? I wish I had siblings. I'm an orphan, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. that was uh, awesome. Pretty crazy, yeah. Well, I just can't say enough how how good of a morning, how how that brightened my day, put a smile on my face. It's gonna it's gonna set the tone for the rest of the day. I'm just so happy, and I'm just so happy for you that you know. And you told me you told me like when I called you uh, last week, you know, when Megan gloated and paid to put 400 ads out there on every piece of social media she could get her grubby little hands on. You know, I, I got called you and I asked you what the hell's going on. And you know, she Samantha told me that day. She goes, Don't worry. Peter's on it. And Peter's on it. So very happy. So that means an appeal is forthcoming. And just like your lawyer said, nope. What we did is we're starting all over. Just starting right now and fresh. This is not going away. And you can't just throw a case out without looking at the evidence. You can't just make a decision it's dismissed unless you have a brand new Mercedes sitting in your driveway for some reason, maybe allegedly a minor well, person. Peter, Peter brought up a good point. Like I was talking about that, and he said, well, I disagree with Samantha on a couple of things because the evidence was presented out in public. 50 million people saw Oprah and Netflix, and it's still being seen on Continuum. So people saw it. But it was, in my opinion, being brushed under the rug and not looked at uh, in proper scope in the paperwork and in court. So that's where it needs to be streamlined. And the bottom line is, oh, the evidence is salient. Um, But, you know, as we see in this world today, a lot of evidence is pushed aside and, and ignored for political reasons. So moving forward on that happy note. Yeah. Yeah, just like just like Samantha said, her her attorney stopped her when they were talking during the interview, and you'll see it because I posted it on my channel. Um, stopped her and says, I, "I disagree with you right there because the evidence was actually broadcast millions of people all over the world. There's your evidence. It was on, you know. So that's what was overlooked. So when they say that there was no evidence or they haven't seen the evidence, well, the whole world saw the evidence. So." Yeah. That issue because the PR and the public were running with this stupid, in my opinion, bullshit uh, to glaze over what was really at issue. They were talking it up as merely a disagreement of opinion about the degree, uh, whether and to what degree we knew each other. And I said, that's not what it's about. It's like you or anybody else out there, if someone makes you out to be the leader of a hate group and you're not, that's very dangerous. And I guarantee. Anybody with a functioning frontal lobe is going to sue. Yeah. That's incredible defamation. And there's nothing about it that is not malicious. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, I mean, I think the, the real issues were being circumvented. And that's why, you know, we we readdress this uh, and, you know, tailor it because it was such obscene damage, in my opinion. And had nothing to do with the sisterly disagreement. That's bullshit. That's a PR spin. Oh, uh, hold on a second. We, we've got a, uh, we've got, uh, it looks like a sugar. We got a sugar in the house. Vermaline 108. Do not lie. Queen loved Harry and Megan. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Isn't it time for your mother to get you another sandwich? <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, but that comment is just going to have to go because it's just stinking up my screen. Bam. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> All 
right. Let's see now. Yeah. All right. Kathleen Brown says, God bless Samantha. Yes, the truth always comes out to light. Kathleen Brown, thank you. Uh, Helen Foreman, troll in the house. Yep. I think they like my channel better than the Sussex Royal channel. <laughs> it's, it's way more entertaining. <laughs> Well, you know what? You need that um, water melt sugar, so you need to keep a water hose in the house. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sue Smith has recent great vids dissecting the Oprah interview lies one at a time with all the proof. You know? Wow. Yeah. Sue Smith, is. She, she's got a good channel. Um, yeah. Awesome. And everybody, yeah. everybody. Please watch TRG. She is great with her research. Yep, we all know this. Oh, uh, yes. And Trace, awesome. the queen. Yeah, you know what else? Somebody told me, um, I, I said it earlier, but somebody reports allegedly that they overheard from somewhere, some something came from somebody in the palace that when Megan left, she told, she told the uh, queen to drop dead. Allegedly, that's what I. Did you imagine? Yeah, I, I I saw articles to that effect, but you know the, the reason I'm going to say that's not crazy and far fetched is that if you look at uh, the mockery of having to curtsy to the queen, that was Megan did it herself. This was not here to say we saw it on Netflix in front of 50 million viewers. So mm -hmm. behaviors like that partnered with. Um, you know, the stories of the queen being threatened with a vault full of skeletons. It wasn't just Geo, it was others. And a lot of this was taking place while she and Harry had to know that the queen was suffering from bone cancer and dying, and yet they are launching attacks from across the pond. You know, uh, excuse me, um, nobody is going to blow smoke up my arse and try and convince me that they were naive to this, that it was not malicious, and that um, she wouldn't say something like, oh, die or go, you know, it's not, it wouldn't surprise me, it's consistent with everything else, in other words, in my opinion. Yeah, good point. Um, Rhea Snakespear says to uh, Vermaline 108, are your meds wearing off? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, um, that's not my Pauline, yeah, Pauline Anna, at Sussex Squad, if you are unable to use the classic English language, then refrain from commenting, please. Yeah, we get these comments on here. It's just like, yeah, my mama learned me how to read. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how to read Yeah, I know. I'll get there. You know, I'm so basic. I'm just so basic and simple. Like I like to do the bells and whistles and sound effects myself. <laughs> I don't know, but I'll get there someday. You know, I, I'm a virgin at YouTube. I'm new. I well, not not. I have not you. Yeah, I'm getting there. It's 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 rough, but that's how it is. This is just life. This is just me. I don't, you know, I just I don't know how else to be. Um, let me let me just tell you this. You're all good because when sound effects don't carry you, your charm and charisma will. Oh, uh, it's kind of warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, so it's it's going to be interesting. I, I did I did really like you know Dan. Can we just say Dan Wooten kicks ass, everybody? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Dan Wooten totally vindicated. Totally just. Fucking just yeah, Dan, you go, Dan. That's awesome. And he's so, yeah. If, if you if you didn't see his post and what he put out, read his page. He shared a lot of evidence. The uh, curmudgeon behind the, the Violent Times is reportedly paid by and friends with Harry. Yeah. Uh, hold on, I got I got I got to read you this comment real quick. Um. April Rogue, ironically, Samantha looks like Princess Diana when she was younger. Bam! Hello! Damn, that's a beautiful compliment. Did you hear that, Megan? I was just wondering, because I, I know you're watching. 
Can everybody just, like we do on every show, can everybody just, let's have a moment of silence and let's use our mental thoughts and project them to the spawn, to, to the spawn ranch in Montecito. I mean, the uh, chicken ranch. And let's this all. Called, this is called, as Megan said on Rachel Ray when she lied about working for the embassy, he said it's kids, Rachel Ray said it's kismet. Let's have a kumbaya, a kismet kumbaya moment. Yeah, we always take a moment on the, on every show, and we we have to go out of our way to ask Megan how she's doing today. <laughs> <laughs> Every if you're driving, people pull over to the side of the road, you know, and just <laughs> yeah, stop what you're doing, yeah. In the big time. Okay, yeah, Elaine Elaine Bine says, when trolls come in, you know you're hitting the big time. You're on YouTube. That's right. I think the trolls should all go start their own channel because then they could just sit there and they just... Have, they, they have them. Yeah, they, they, could, have them. they could just... It looks like... Yeah, they could just go sit there and just fluff each other up like and just like... You know? <laughs> oh, you know, you know what their channel you know what their channels look like if you ever saw the time machine i use this gif a lot those creatures that covered their eyes that can't come out of their mother's basement that's what their channels look like it looks like a gathering of yeah you know basement creatures and that one that one weird dude that one guy who just sits there and just goes gee he just won't shut up it's like sussex squad tv oh god if you ever just want to just turn your stomach or if you if you ate some bad food and you need to throw up you can just turn that channel on, <laughs> man. But this, blah 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 blah. Hate 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 hate. Boy, do they spread hate. But you know, not everybody can can have a wholesome, well-rounded, educational, beautiful, awesome channel like the real Thomas Marco Jr. Our friends. When we have lovely guests on, like Samantha, my my beautiful older sister. Uh, oh. See, you know, when you were when you were in the diaper, I wanted to push you down when you tried to take candy out of my Easter basket. But now I'm glad I didn't push you really hard. Yeah, that's why you forgot me on the street in in Chicago, walking around. <laughs> well, I was I was found by the police walking down the street in Chicago in my shitty diaper. <laughs> okay, since you were since you were a baby, and I was younger, I'll tell it like it really was. I was like. A little bit older than two and somehow when our mother was sleeping uh and dad was working we got down the stairs in this tall apartment building got out onto the street after unchaining the door i mean i don't know how babies do this it's a it's a pretty good suggestion to everybody to make your door locks up high because even babies can get up on a chair and undo them that's scary so long story short with you know this one in chicago um, he's only wearing a diaper. I don't remember what I was wearing, but um, we ended up showing up at my uh, one of our grandmother's doors, which was quite a ways away after crossing intersections. And um, my grandmother looked down at me. She said, oh, heavens, where's Tommy? And I said, <laughs> he's back looking at the car because there was a red car. You wouldn't go with me to grandma's house because you were so fascinated by this red car. So... I was a big kid. I didn't know. I left you there and went to grandma's by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and the police ended up bringing you home, sitting on newspaper with no diaper on. Um, they picked you up off of a crowded Chicago street. <laughs> God, that's terrifying yeah. to any mother to think that while you're sleeping. You know what? Let's face it, though. That's kind of neglectful. Mothers need to get their asses out of bed when the babies are awake. You don't sleep and let your kids walk around the house. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It, you know, interesting time. Interesting time in Chicago. It was, it was, could you imagine if we still live there? How 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 different our lives would be. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't live there now. We'd be out of a home because they're putting illegal immigrants in you know everywhere that people would live and chicago residents are getting pissed off so without getting too far into politics yeah it's a mess i would not want to live in chicago 
Maureen Ingelson says, I believe Megan is insanely jealous of Samantha's beauty and intelligence. Bam. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's very kind. I like to believe that everyone's beautiful in their own way, but for, unfortunately for some people, it's never enough, you know, and that's sad. But yeah. when you become outwardly evil and cruel to others because you can never have some ideal or you can never, you know, be someone else and you target others that you're jealous of, you know, that that's just really sad because she could have bonded with a lot of people, including us, uh, and made a lot of friends that would probably help fill some of those voids. Oh, wow. Well, here we got Menno sucks. My, my first subscriber, by the way, my first membership holder, and a dedicated, awesome, amazing person. Oh, she is just incredible. She, she threw in a $50 tip in the tip jar, right? And she says, Tom, remember the other day I told you about Megzie, Megzie's fake education on the website? I said, I'll email the palace. Mm, I see, they have been removed. She's listed as an actress. Oh. Wow. I'm surprised they didn't put mattress in between Anne and actress. <laughs> well, but that's what that's what she wanted to be listed as and known as. And she hasn't, you know, she's not the red carpet. She's, you know, trying to find her way in the world seemingly. And she abandoned royal duty. She can't be listed as a working royal or a royal because she made a different choice. Yeah, no, she, uh, that's what that, you know, I was, who does, who, who does that? Who gets to the highest plateau possible in life? It doesn't get, you can't get any bigger than that. And well, it's, a prime, prime, it's a prime example of the fact that there are some people, because in my opinion, they are trying to build voids and they can't even identify what they are. That no matter what they obtain, they will never be happy with that. They can't mm -hmm. see um, what's incredible and how, you know, glass half empty or half full. Sometimes it can be totally full and right under their nose and they won't see it. That's sad. Yeah. I mean, how unhappy do you have to be on the inside? I mean, seriously, how just like how deranged and evil and selfish do you have to be on the inside to never be happy? I mean, it's crazy. People people would would like go to extremes to, to have that opportunity. And then you go in there and you, you know? I guess what I question, even with counseling education, is how some people can have such insatiable egos and airs of entitlement that like, that there is no ceiling on, um, you know, what what's considered great, what's great enough for them, what they want. And furthermore, that they don't feel that they have to be qualified like everybody else in the world to get to that rung on the ladder. Like they just want to jump to the top. They demand they're entitled. And I, I really don't understand that. I mean, I think there is, in my opinion, an organic basis for that disconnectedness and that irrationality. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do know. Deborah Grisdale. She wants her own perfume, essence of, question mark, uh, swamp dung. Um, I don't know, but, you know, I want to say something real quick. Let's just pray, or, you know, no, let her do it, actually. Let her, let her make her own, like, candles with her personal scent in there like you know because she can't seem to you know come up with her own ideas anyway so maybe she'll start selling those at the uh at the riviera boat hotel or the show whatever uh, it is I gotta, I got, yeah i gotta bring this up have you ever tom have you ever seen the movie gladiator of course okay so i totally identify with maximus um and commodus the evil brother who was insatiable, but he was psychotic. I mean, you got to remember back in 
the days of Rome, they were also dealing with syphilis and all sorts of stuff that was contributing to psychosis that they weren't educated enough to understand. So there was a lot going on with that character. What I'm going to say is that character was insatiable, had a disgusting appetite for control, for being at the top, and he would kill his own father and hide his sibling uh, because he wanted to be the ruler supreme and his ego would accept nothing else. So I identify with that movie and when I feel like I can't understand how someone can be insatiable and that there might be an organic basis for it, I'm not saying that's you know, exactly the case that would take a proper assessment, but it takes somebody who is, in my opinion, cognitively disjointed to be unaware of all of that and, and to repeatedly step on people and always blame the world around them. It's always everyone else's flaw. It's always mm -hmm. um, victims and, and never to, and never to be able to see inside their own stuff. There's no intrinsic, uh, you know, uh, exploration. <clears throat> And their rewards, similarly, their rewards seem to be extrinsic rather than intrinsic. That's also weird to me because we all know at the end of the day, you can't take it with you. Yeah. It's the victim mentality, you know? And this this hoarding greed thing of like, there's just nothing will ever be enough. I mean, and it's very true. You can't take it with you when you die, right? So you may as well give your money away if you have too much. Help out charity. Help people with it. You know, you don't need, nope, nope. I mean, you just, uh, what are you going to do with it? You know, it's. Well, the, and, the, and the money, let's face it, we've all been there. You know, everybody out there listening. Money and things are replaceable. People are not. So, you know, that being said, I don't understand how some people don't understand that. And there are some people that just don't care because the stuff is too much fun. Yeah. You know, don't get me wrong, you know, I mean, if you had a boatload of money, why do I keep saying boat in reference to that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. It's, just, yeah, I mean, yeah, have a good time, you know, buy yourself a nice house, buy yourself a couple of nice cars, you know, go out to dinner, you know, you know, live a little bit, but, but, wow, I don't know, greed is the root of evil. And I guess evil has been mentioned several times today in reference. So there you go. There you have it. Um, I'd like to say that Menno sucks has gifted five memberships today, which is just astonishing. That's incredible. And I think that just now put me up over a hundred members, which is awesome. Thank you so much. Aza 0801 save a oh, gifted one gifted one. Yep. I, yeah. It's just, you guys are awesome. All right, uh, Tay Tom eighty two ninety five. Be careful. There's a fake Dan Wooten channel. Looks exactly the same. Look in the description. It says disclaimer, fan account. Dan is trying to take the fake down. Yeah, just you know, I wonder who that would be. Yeah, I, sure. It's, it's it's a troll. Yeah, it's a troll. I mean, they just don't let up. It's just like get over yourselves. You, you guys are sailing on the SS Mata shit show and it's sinking. I'm sorry. Oh, but they, if there was a fake ARO account, would they? Uh, yeah, I don't know. But but at one time you have to ask yourself, it's just like, it's like how much, how much more is this? How much more is going to come? How, how much worse is this going to get? Save yourselves while you can. The, the, you guys are going to end up right on the bottom of the seafloor next to the Titanic. You know? It's, yeah, it's, it's don't, don't you think this is weird? I think most of us who are adults, you know, this shit, I will call it, and I won't even apologize for the profanity because it is shit. It stop after high school and after, after people have, you know, gone through all of their adolescent uh, identity crisis and social referencing and squabbling and having to be better than the next guy. But when you see, like, and, and it's not even a matter of that, but when you see people in adulthood acting like nasty teenagers or people at a football game, <laughs> yeah, uh, Ma you know, out of control and drunk without even being drunk, yeah, it's just weird behavior. It's so irrational. 
Yeah, but I'm glad I'm glad Menno uh, Menno brought up the uh, the thing about the education. I mean, you have an extensive. Yeah, I want I want I want to say that also. Um, Megan claims to have this extended uh, super education, which I don't think she does. Okay. On the other hand, the degrees that Samantha has achieved with her disability, Aristotle, how many degrees do you have? Bonnie? Well, I have, I have a bachelor's degree that consists of a major and a minor, a um, criminology major with a minor in psychology, and then I went on to get two master's degrees, one in mental health counseling and the other in vocational rehabilitation counseling. Bam. Now, I'd like to ask you a question. Since you have a mental health degree, what is your take on your sister? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm, you can't really go there, so just save it. But I thought that. Although I haven't analyzed it yet because of all this chaos that's been going on since I got to Florida, but I will because I'm qualified to do so. Mm -hmm. um, I, can't, I can't speak to that in terms of a diagnosis because number one, it wouldn't be ethical, although my observations, I've been very forthcoming about what they are. And I've also uh, cited known psychologists, world-renowned psychologists, such as Dr. Carol Lieberman, who have quoted her as a malignant narcissist. And in my opinion, she meets the SM criteria for that. So that's all over the world, all over the internet. Everybody is free to go look it up. And I can say that I agree with that. Uh, but, you know, beyond that, um, it is what it is. And I would hope that somehow um, I'm not going to make a statement as to whether or not counseling would work or not. But I think it would be healthy. It's healthy for you know, everybody in this day and age dealing with stress and different conditions, but she is not exempt from that. Mm -hmm. um, Lil Do, way to go, Samantha. Wow, Samantha. Uh, Asia0801, wow, Samantha, you are amazing. Isn't it amazing what she's accomplished? And she, I mean, talk about intelligence. Samantha doesn't need a dictionary of word salad when she talks. She already has it up there and she doesn't have to have a teleprompter or memorize big words to make her sound smart, which is, uh, yeah, it's just, it's real intelligence. Yeah, well, no, no. <laughs> Until I had my coffee. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, coffee is a staple. Um, but it just goes to show you. Uh, I saw a good one over here. I'm just looking for it again real quick. Um, Oh, let's see. Wolf Atkins, the sad part is if she actually sold candles that looked and smelled like her feet, <laughs> there would be plenty of sugars out there adding to that to their wish list. <laughs> oh, you, you said candles. I, you said candles. I cannot like hold back on this one. I don't know how many of you might remember, but... Um, I think it was a year and a half, two years ago. They were marketing candles of themselves deified, like on those holy candles, Harry and Megan, with their hands across their chest as if they were saints and you could get them off of Amazon. I just about gagged when I saw that mess. Yeah. 99.9% .9 of everything is going to come from China. I mean, very, very, I mean, there's some small arts and craft places that make handmade things, but... On the big market, when you when you're opening up a business and you're trying to sell stuff on Instagram, hint, we already know where it's going to come from with a little fake label on it. But um, Julian, let's see, hold on, hold on. Um, wow, Samantha, oh, hold on. love from a who said that? Love from a fellow psychiatrist. Where was that? Who was that? I saw that. Somebody said, wow. Somebody said, hello. From a, Oh, wow, Samantha. You are no. Hold on. I'll find it. Anyway, what do you want to say, Bonnie? No, I was going to say back to uh, that candle thing, you know, when and, and back to the insatiable ego thing. When you got yourself on a candle packaging yourself as a god, mm -hmm. you know, it's got to, it's got to be questionable.
Oh, okay. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, I sure did. I was just reading uh, Catwoman 65's comment uh, because I bought this up. Um, Menno had brought this up to me the other day about the degrees that Megan does not have. Catwoman 65, I, I understand that. Maggie never finished college. She attended for a couple years but did not complete. She is not listed on alumni of Northwestern University. That's right. That, no, that's interesting. I have to say I disagreed with that for a while. I'm not defending her, but Grandma Markle was at her graduation. Dad took her. Yeah. So I don't know why she's not listed. I don't know what happened, but um, I do know that she did graduate. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. Weren't you there? I thought you were there. No, I couldn't go. I didn't go. So um, mm. I had my own stuff going on, but Grandma Dad took Grandma Markle. Okay. Hmm. Jerry, a beige word salad bowl. <laughs> no, she was at my graduation, though, for my bachelor's degree. Hold on a second. What was this? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. One, two, three, got it. Thomas, who was the bloke in the background with the sunglasses on during the interview? I saw that too when I just, I go, look at Mark just chilling right there in the background. That's my bodyguard. That's, yeah, that's yeah. my bodyguard. Yeah, that's you know, that's. He didn't, he, didn't know, he, didn't, he didn't know he was on camera. And, you know, it was one of those kind of like sort of impromptu things. We're not, you know, staging for mm -hmm. glam, and it, it was what it was. Sometimes you just interview wherever you are. Yeah, I, you know, I would almost pay to see that if somebody tried to come mess with you at your house. Oh man! <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right, Kelly Mulholland. Hi, Thomas. Hope you are well. Sending lots of. Lots of lot from Belfast, Northern Ireland. Thank you. Awesome. One, two, three on it. She has ruined that color for me, probably for a lot of people. The liar, Brenda Carter, the super brood sorority sisters, I shut. <laughs> anyway. So that's why I popped up this morning. Um, like I said, I just got an early start. I, I tried not to do any social media yesterday. I took a break and had a nice day off. And then this morning I was just back on it. I looked at it and I just, I was just, I was beside myself. So happy. And so that's why I posted this live and I still have to post later. Uh, later today, I'll do it. Uh, another members only. Uh, cause the last one was fun and I'm going to call a lot more people this time. So do you have anything else you want to say, Bonnie, Samantha? Sorry. I keep calling you Bonnie. No, I just, uh, <laughs> I hope everybody out there is doing great, having a great start to your week. And, um, thanks for having me in. All right. Well, I'll call you later when I go to dad's. All right. Take care everyone. Cheers. Thanks. All right. Roger over out. Roger over 10, four. Well, can we just, I, I just want to say how happy I am for Samantha. And I'm so glad that Megan, you know, you can put out as many PR stories as stupid little online.com newspapers that are irrelevant unless you pay to put your stuff on there. Go ahead and put them out there. It's all right. You're going back to court. You know, you, it's, it's, you didn't win anything. So it's going to a higher court. Yes. One that's not influenced or corrupt, allegedly, in my opinion. But I hope everybody has an incredible day. Uh, what time is it? It's uh, Oh, it's getting kind of late in the UK. I just going 10 o'clock there. So it's past everybody's bedtime out there. But uh, Australia is just waking up now. And thanks for tuning in, guys. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. Hit the like button. Tell, tell all your friends what a great, great channel this is. 
And when stuff like this pops up, I'll just pop up alive. Other than the ones that I always schedule, all right? Love you guys. Have an amazing, amazing day. Hug your loved ones. Tell everybody in your family you love them. Because uh, you never know. Life is too short. All right? See you guys.